Hi everyone, we are on verdict watch for the Patrick Frazee trial. Verdict could come in at any moment now. The fate of this case is in the hands of the jury. So let's take a look at what happened during the closing arguments. Assistant District Attorney Elizabeth Reed began the day in Teller County Court with the prosecution's closing. She stood up slowly from her seat and said, we all wish Kelsey Barrett could walk through that door right now. That's never going to happen. She talked about the final moments and actions in Kelsey Barrett's life, how she had conversations with coworkers about the Christmas party and whether Patrick Frazee would be attending with her, how she went to Walmart to buy medication because Frazee got sick in the middle of the night. While Kelsey Barrett is planning the future, this man was plotting her murder for months, months, she says, as she points directly at Frazee in the courtroom. This is not consistent with someone who's going to walk off and leave her child. It's not consistent with someone who is suicidal. It's consistent with someone who is planning the future with the man she plans to marry. Prosecutors went through receipts detailing the shopping trip at Safeway. She bought sweet potatoes, texting Frazee about a casserole recipe. Kelsey Barrett was planning Thanksgiving dinner, Reed said. She's never going to eat it because he knows he's going to kill her. Reed went through slide after slide, poking holes in Frazee's timeline of events. He was seen with video surveillance at the Federal Credit Union and Walmart. According to Frazee, at 2.45 p.m., he was back to, his flor to Florissant to check on his cattle. He's not home for Thanksgiving dinner. He's in Woodland Park because he just killed Kelsey Barrett. She pointed out cell phone records that show Frazee's phone pinged off a cell phone tower in Woodland Park at that time. A video surveillance camera showed Frazee's truck leaving Kelsey Barrett's neighborhood around 4.40 p.m. with a large black tote box in the back of his truck. Kelsey Barrett is in that box. Her beaten and battered body is in that box, Reed said. He is going back to his house to eat Thanksgiving dinner with Barrett in his truck. The prosecution reviewed the definition of deliberation, outlining the testimony from witnesses that back up Frazee has spoken to them in advance, making a push that first degree murder is the only charge that makes sense. Second degree murder does not apply in this case, Reed said. There is nothing about this case that screams second degree murder. Everything is premeditated. Everything is deliberated. Do not check that box on your verdict. Reed also backed up Crystal Lee's character, trying to prove to jurors she is someone they can trust. She didn't have to come forward at all, but when she did come forward, she told us everything, Reed said, including the things that subjected her to criminal prosecution. Reed continued by saying, everything Lee said can be backed up by evidence. Everything the defendant said is contradicted by the evidence. The defense then stepped up with Adam Steigerwald doing the closing. He addressed jurors directly as soon as a quick recess was over. You are being asked to ignore your common sense and the evidence, Steigerwald said. You're being asked to consider circumstantial evidence and the testimony of Crystal Lee after she signed on the dotted line. Steigerwald set out poking holes in prosecutions, witness testimony, and attacking Crystal Lee's credibility. You have to believe Crystal Lee before you can believe the rest of the evidence. Steigerwald argued the prosecution laid out a story based on Crystal Lee's testimony and built evidence around that timeline to support it. He started asking questions to the jury. What 
There is not. There is no image of Patrick going inside with a bat. There is no image of Frazee going inside with a tote. No explanation for where Patrick's truck was parked for the hours of Thanksgiving. Steigerwald addresses the jury with these points and he points to motion censored surveillance footage of Frazee entering Barrett's condo holding something in his left hand. Prosecutors claim Frazee is carrying the container to conceal Barrett's body. Steigerwald picks up a replica tote in the courtroom saying, it's heavy to pick up even when empty. You have to lug it, he says. You can't sneak by a motion security camera. If Steigerwald then pivots to questioning how the evidence supports the horrific, bloody crime scene Lee describes when entering the apartment. If Crystal Lee's description of the scene is accurate, then there is, this is a horrific, bloody scene. Why is there no image of blood on Frazee, he asks. Why is there no DNA evidence in Barrett's washing machine? There is still not a single image of Crystal coming in or going out, let alone anyone that sees it happen. Why isn't Crystal's DNA anywhere in that apartment? Why isn't Patrick's DNA there? If he created the scene that Lee described, there would be sweat and traces of his DNA. If Frazee hit Barrett 10 to 15 times with a baseball bat, nobody hears a thing and no one sees anything from the kitchen window that isn't covered for two days, Steigerwald says. The defense pointed out how the motives of Lee coming to Colorado or Frazee discussing a potential murder with his friends doesn't make sense. There are questions all of us have. Why does Crystal Lee come to Colorado once to commit murder, let alone two times, let alone three or four times? There is nobody who would act that way, but that's what the prosecution needs you to believe. It's the worst plan anyone could come up with, Steigerwald said. Is there a day of the year where anyone is less likely to be alone, less likely to be missed, less likely to speak of family than Thanksgiving? Steigerwald looks at the physical evidence, including the tooth fragment found on the Frazee Ranch, but questions why the tooth has no burnt plastic or metal on it. If the story is Barrett's body was burned inside a black plastic tote container, Steigerwald closed by calling for the jury to look past Lee's story, trying to cast reasonable doubt on the prosecutor's circumstantial evidence. I know how bad this looks, but you 16 were chosen to look past that and look on the evidence, Steigerwald said. District Attorney Dan May responds, Dan May spent time reviewing the physical evidence, telling jurors the defense wants them to speculate. He rounded out closing statements by saying, we want you to hold him, Patrick Frazee, accountable. He took a bat into Kelsey's apartment and he beat her and he beat her and he beat her, May said, as his voice escalated with each repetition, counting up on both hands as he went and he beat her, leaving a bloodbath for someone else to clean up and he beat her. He stopped after 15 counts on his fingers, adding, and who knows how many more. Please stop this man from getting away with murder, May said. Judge Scott Sells instructed the seven females and five males making up the jury how they are to proceed with their deliberation, how they should only consider the facts of this case and having no communication or research about the trial to influence a decision. Patrick Frazee sat in the courtroom wearing a blue striped dress shirt. He stared at the jurors during the instructions. So this case and justice for Kelsey is in the hands of this jury. We're on verdict watch and I will be updating you 
verdict comes in, it could have actually come in while I've been recording this. I don't know. I have to check. But we will be discussing everything, the closing arguments, the verdict if it's in, the entire case tonight in our live, and pray for justice for Kelsey Barrett and that the jury does the right thing. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.